In Saviors of Uldum, we were reintroduced to the mechanic of quests. Some of them were good, some of them were bad, but I wanted to see if it was still possible to win a game with everyone while making it the reason why I win. Let's see if it's possible. The first quest was Corrupt the Waters for Shaman. This quest had you play six battle cry cards and your reward was a hero power that would double your battle cries. It goes without saying that this was really, really good in standard. So I had a feeling that this one was going to be the easiest and a great place to start the challenge. And it turned out to be a great idea because the quest seems really, really good in wild. Now I did go against a lot of funky matchups. I went against someone who was stuck in 2015. All right, we make him cry. We, we bring him. I should probably do this just in case. We bring him back to the real world. Yeah, this win won't count beating up a free to play kid. Hey, we didn't make the rules of what deck I had to beat Mr. Regal. All right, we'll move on. I'll give him the win. Whatever. After going against the mage that absolutely destroyed me, we went against the rogue that also had a very interesting deck. We'll just play this. Don't. That's fine. All right, this is actually a really good matchup for us because they're going for value, but we're literally the value king, so we can't lose this. This might look extremely cringe. I'm actually just going to play that and then play the tour guide. So I have double mutinous next turn. Don't ask me if that's good or not. When you go against a value deck with this quest line, it is very hard for your opponent to win because you just outvalue basically everything. And Shutterwalk is often enough just to close games. You really want to vent. You're really doing that. You're really going all the way. What am I playing? I don't Okay, it's fine. I don't, I don't, I'm confused, but at the same time, uh, it is what it is, right? I, I guess we just do it again. Let's eat more stuff. You have anything else in your hand? Delicious. All he has is spells. Why do you run the shuffle card in Reno? I'm going to say he was probably going to play Reno, then shuffle three Renos into his deck. And then I thought about it. I don't know what I'm playing against, chat. Oh, God. Wait, he countered me. But ironically, I might lose this. You guys may think that this deck is bad, but he has the element of surprise on his side. And his name is Cha-Cha. The terrifying name. Daddy D doesn't do a whole lot here, unfortunately. Yeah, it kind of sucks. But I'm just going to play it because that means we can go uh, to Shutterwalk, I guess, after. The element of surprise is the win condition for Rogue, yes. But what? Oh my god. I forgot that card existed, I'm going to be honest. We'll give him uh, We'll give him Big Loath up. We don't even need to double it, I think. We could just do this into this. Well, then it should be good enough. Okay. Did we already cast Sire and Athens in out? What the? Unfortunately for the rogue, Shutterwalk was too much, and I was able to win the game with the quest, which means we move on to untapped potential for Druid. Untapped potential was a pretty great quest in standard. It was very easy to complete, and it gave you a passive hero power, which allowed your choose one cards to have both facts combined. And there is a lot of really powerful choose one cards in the game currently, which means this one should also not take very long, and I had a pretty great strategy. That's really good. This is really good. This is a great I don't imagine this one's going to be very hard. That actually might be really, really helpful at some point. So we'll take it. Why choose both when you can just choose 20 mana? True. I might actually just hero power because I'd rather get both of these. Look, this guy's doing nothing. He doesn't play guff. He drew on turn five with nourish, though. It's a little surprising in mind for me, at least. We get it. And we're about to take over the game. Watch how powerful this quest is in 2022. You guys think we need guff? Absolutely not. Am I getting tempo brand? The disrespect? My win condition with this deck was with Jade Idol. The idea of constantly summoning Jade Golems while simultaneously shuffling Jade Idols into my deck, which means I can never run out of larger and larger men, which means that this Druid is in for a world of trouble. This is a Sire Denathrius deck, almost guaranteed, right? All right, we'll put the 6-6 six, six here. Man, we really got power crap. Maybe running a Sire Denathrius deck with this would be really good. Ah, we'll come to that bridge if we lose this game, but we won't. We're going to move on after this. I think 20 mana is really, really good. Yeah, I would agree. But you know what's better than 20 mana? Having the ability to have both your choose one effects activated. That's really good. I should have put Starfall in the deck, though. I regret not putting Starfall in. Love Nourish. Let's do this first. Dying to a 6-6. Six, six. All right, more Jades. More. Larger and larger green men. Wait, Scenarius next turn is actually kind of popping. Unless I die here, but there's no way I die here. Where's the auction? You think I need more deals, bro? I'm already getting the best deal in the game. But we'll start with this. Absolutely trash. I guess you pick the four damage first, and then it goes. Again, you guys could be like, well, Gu because you didn't have Guff, you lost, but it's not going to be Guff. It's going to be Sire Denathrius that's just sitting right here waiting for his time to shine. Okay, it's not, again, not, not the worst thing in the world. I need fat Jade Idols. We're going to burn some cards, but it's okay. Half of them are Jade Idols anyways. Go, go, go. I need more. I need more. Okay, these stats are actually pretty relevant because it stops Sire Denathrius from just one-shotting me, which actually is very important. Next turn, I, I probably need to do this. He's going to do it. I'm getting sucked. No, we're not sucking. Okay. That's so illegal. We can start with this, I guess. 
Damn. Oh, it's the word. Wait, trade idols, please. Thank you. Oh, we're so large. Oh, we're the largest. All right, we have so much stats on board. Maybe I shouldn't have played Lodi actually in hindsight because Lodi could have killed their Dinathrius. We're already past that point. <laughs> the anti suck tech. Wait, what are you doing? We probably missed lethal. I don't care. At this point, it's about sending a message. Wow, that orca is really going to be a problem for me. It turned out the orca was not a problem, which allowed me to move on to our next quest, Supreme Archaeology for Warlock. This quest did have some time to shine in Warlock. Drawing 20 cards honestly shouldn't be that bad in Wild, so I figured this is another easy quest to get out of the way. The hero power is also pretty decent. It goes really nicely into a combo deck. It turned out I was wrong. Do we ever tap? We don't tap. I want to. Because I already know what's going to happen, dude. I'm going to hit the button. We're going to draw a card. It's not going to be Malagos. I'm going to cry. So we do this. All right, dude, listen. It's a 50-50. If I don't get Malagos here, I am conceding on the spot and we're getting rid of Alex and um, the other Alex. Gone and gone. Probably Giga, even though I don't really want him. And if for those of you who are like, why did he concede? Send a message. Alex straws is all over the world. Poke up at all the burn at the bottom of your deck. Well, the hope is, is that you would draw enough burn before you actually draw the Malagos, right? Wait, I just realized the error of my ways. This only does two damage, not four. So they only do seven. Listen, gamers, listen, guys, I love Malagos with all my heart. Listen, I will. I was going to say I'll get a Malagos tattoo on my chest, but I feel like if I actually got Malagos here, I would cry. The idea of this deck is to finish your quest, draw the Malagos with your hero power and kill your opponent with burn. But I was having trouble actually getting Malagos from the quest hero power. This turned out to be a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Perfect. Excellent. Love to see it. Not upset in the slightest. Unfortunately, no poke help, but we'll send it. Bro, it's the current year. No one runs this card in the current year. Malagos. Malagos. I don't think it's the deck. It's more the fact that I'm unlucky. This game actually hates me. Look at who it is. Malagos in the flesh. I didn't think about ice block. I think I would actually have a nervous breakdown if I ended up going through this entire thing and then I ended up getting Malagos and it was if it was Malagos, if it was ice blocks, right? Okay. Excuse me, what the hell? All right, you know what? We're not complaining about this one. This is free. You see how calm I am? You see it? Look at me. Look how calm I am right now. After losing a ton with this deck, I went against a priest that seemed a little bit odd. Am I right? All right, this is a lot of cards to plot twist. I mean, I don't really need to plot twist. I can go double tradable here and get two more. Okay, not Malagos, not Malagos. And if I could drop Hulk Hell too, that'd be pretty cool. If you drop enough games, you can pick up a win on a bot, bro. You guys hear that? It's Malagos for the next draw. Can you imagine though? Okay, oh my God. Okay, okay. Everyone calm down. This is it. It's the pull Kelt dream. I can't pull Kelt this turn. I play the flames at the bottom of the deck too. Can you heal me? Okay, that's soul fire. All right, I never die. I don't know if I can win. I have to gig up the next turn, I'm pretty sure though. You can't play Reign of Fire if he goes face. I'm not worried at all. You guys are acting like I, you guys are acting like I'm, I'm worried or something. All right, I got a gig of this turn. I have to giga. Wait, unless it's just lethal now. Is it ever lethal now? If I do this, this soul fire, it's seven plus nine. Don't think it is yet. So now he's at 26, which is actually a bigger deal. You're just gonna heal, dude. Well, yeah, I'm not worried about the damage this turn. I'm worried about the damage next turn. Your turn's over. You're dead. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out when you get a zero cost Malagos, it can win you the game, which lets us go on to the next quest, making mummies for Paladin. This quest was not very good in standard. The main issue was the lack of good reborn minions. So I thought that this was going to take me an extremely long period of time. But with the release of Sire Denathrius, maybe there was something that we could do with this quest. Against the priest playing Sire Denathrius might actually be good. I don't want to coin because the problem if I coin and I don't have a turn three play as I'm crying. That's actually so good. The hero power actually isn't that bad. If this deck had more reborn minions, like if it had more reborn minions into the game, it would have been actually fine because they didn't actually add any more other than shot bot. It, it kind of just sucked. I'm going to be honest. This legitimately might be a one shot. This was the perfect hand, like keeping Denathrius into this. I don't care. Play this, play this, but I want to do that after, right? I want to copy it soon. Because reborn minions are so good at infusing Sire Denathrius, it seemed like this quest was a perfect match for him. And because we're going against a slower priest deck, maybe this quest wouldn't be 
as hard as I thought. This Denathrius is going to have to be like insane. All right, something delicious. If they can't kill this mass contender and I can just keep hero powering it every single turn, it's insane. This might be the biggest Denathrius we'll ever see in our life. And I'm basically doubling every minion. Now, if they steal my Denathrius, I probably will cry. Oh my God, that's a lot of dudes. All right, once again, we copy. If they clear the board at all here, they're just dead. Oh, never mind. Wait, no way this actually took me one game. Okay, I mean, I'll take it, whatever, dude. Sure. Somehow one of the worst quests in Standard ended up being extremely easy to do, and that lets us move on to hack the system for Warrior. Now, if you thought the last quest was bad, this one was 100% worse. It was virtually unplayable. So I thought that this one was gonna take me forever. I think the way I'm gonna win this is by just getting a board first i'm gonna keep cargo guard because i need the armor why do i even have this quest but i do think renathal is very very good to put patches into patches actually would have been great all right this is gonna be miserable yo actually insane i got this quest day one big oop. the mini which gives you six armor when you attack again i think the problem in it is like with a lot of these cards they're, they're just too slow oh my god God, dude, what the hell am I playing again? All right, well, we're almost done the quest at least. You could ask the same true. Pass the trade. I can't take additional damage at this point. Okay, well, we got the quest uh, next turn. Chat, I might be coping on my mind here, but this actually might work. Okay, we got it. I think the biggest reason why this quest actually was a lot better than expected was because of Prince Renathal. The extra 10 health made a ginormous difference. Order lol. Wait, is this winnable? The four threes are kind of popping up. Yo, we're kind of popping off. I was so nervous. Are they dead? They're not dead, but four threes put in work. I'm going to be honest here, dude. How did we, we, this, this quest took me so much longer. You could tell by my confusion that it shouldn't have been this easy, but that means we can move on to our next quest, which is the rogue one. In standard, this quest wasn't bad or good. It was just kind of mediocre. There was just better stuff that you could be doing with rogue at the time, but I didn't feel like this is necessarily gonna be that bad. Getting a three, two weapon with immune with a value deck could be the difference. Dual class cards count for the quest. No, cause there's technically still rogue card. I don't care. How was it about your NBA career night? Yeah, so it was the championship game. I think it was, I was on the Lakers who were going against, what's another NBA team? The Raptors. We're going against the Raptors, right? My hometown. It was tied up and I was supposed to hit the three point shot, but I can't, I can't beat the Raptors guys. Like, come on, are you kidding me? It's my hometown. So I, I, I threw it. I stopped playing professional NBA. That's actually a really good hand. The deck I built for this quest was completely based around the weapon itself, using the weapon to hit my opponent's minions or go face while I have a ton of value from thief cards. And against a slower control deck, this would have worked perfectly. But against a deck like Questline Shaman, it might be impossible to win. White Eyes. And this card was pretty popping back in the day. Shout out to my uh, my fellow viewers who played White Eyes back in the day. All right, we'll start smacking face. Oh, you mother... Oh my God. It's like, it's actually... Get wrecked. Extra will go White Eyes into that. I'm pretty excited for the test. Oh, they're running Cthulhu. I didn't even realize. Is the Storm Guardian also from Shaman? Because if it is, that's pretty great. I feel like I lose. I need to actually like kill my opponent here. The dragon's really good. A brood mother is very good. Which one though? Well, I mean, this one's just always better. Man, look at that power creep, dude. They do are so dirty. I'm tempted to actually bounce this back to my hand. Even though I could have done it with Tess, like, I think I need more spells. Ooh, that's spicy. Nice! Wait, you burnt? Oh, I thought he burned Brucon. I was like, you are trolling. I'm, I'm like almost 100% sure I have to go face. Oof. The bright news is, is that uh, this hysteria is pretty popping. All right, I have to do this. This is happening no matter what. It's kind of unfortunate because I'm not going to attack face here, but I mean, I can't leave this up if I am being honest or I die. What am I getting? Right. It's a really close game. I just don't really want to see healing if possible because healing is the, the bigger issue here. Heron into, oh, brother. Jackpot. Okay. I guess we'll start with this and see what we got. Lightning storm. I need that just to get this out of the way. I don't really want to take seven. That seems bad. I have a feeling I'm just not going to win this just strictly because they just outvalue me with everything I do, but maybe. I have a feeling he doesn't have healing. Otherwise, he would have used it, right? So I'm going to evasion, I think, just so I don't die. I have to go sicko mode here, dude. What is happening? Oh my God. At least they're, they're super overloaded, I guess. Oh, 
Oh, thank God he did it twice. Oh my God, thank you. I saw the Thoris and my heart drop. I got, if I could just hit face every single turn, it's really important. They totem and pass. They dunk tank me. Ooh, Wand Thief. Ice Block. You're goddamn right we're picking Ice Block. Absolute ass, but I mean, who cares? No, we're so close. Just let me win. Why didn't you hit faith? If they think it's ice block and they didn't trade there and they don't have an answer to my minion, they're just dead on board, right? So they probably had to do it like that. Shout out to Ice Block for actually winning me in that game, but the weapon did a lot. After winning with the rogue quest, we move on to the mage one, Raid the Sky Temple. Now this quest wasn't necessarily bad, but it wasn't great either because it's entirely based on RNG. The quest is simple enough to complete, but your hero power really dictates how powerful the quest will be. But I had to start praying to Yogg-Saron before this challenge. Otherwise, this quest would have taken me a long time. And that could have been cool. Oh, well, that's absolutely useless. So that's pretty bad. All right. What the hell? Oh, I can't leave this up. Oh, shoot. Wait, why didn't you trade though? Was it guaranteed eight damage? No, it's not. Okay. No, sorry. My bad it is. You're right. Has my hero power done anything this game? It's questionable. All right. Uh, ice block and uh, Ray, I guess. If we win this game, we already know it's coming down to the hero power, bro. It's it's not, it's nothing else. Okay, hero power again. Damn it, man. It's been so bad. Ice block, ice block. Well, maybe, maybe they, maybe they fall for it. <laughs> but that's just the nature of Hearthstone. A lot of the time you're gonna get unlucky, but sometimes a miracle will happen. But that, oh, that's okay. Good hand, good hand. Problem with this quest in wild is there's so many bad options. I thought it was gonna be quest hunter for a quick second, but it's not. But maybe we get lucky, right? Oh, damn. I really like that card. The win con for this deck. Hopefully the, the quest. As much as I say there's a lot of bad spells for mage in wild right now, there's a lot of good spells. Technically put Renathal in the deck. All right. At least we got our quest done though. If we can kill this, that'd be fantastic. Actually, it's hundred percent. It always, it always happens. No, you f you tease me like that. Okay. Yo, that's free mana. Roaring torch. It's not bad. Maybe I just start setting damage face. Oh, it's a freaking rat. I hate the rat. Did you play two mana for that? Yeah, but like I played it for zero though. You know what I mean? I got, I paid two mana for it. I played it for zero mana. So like it's free. Yeah, it's all, I'm obviously joking. I'm not being serious. Good card. Okay. I like where your head's at game. I don't remember. I don't have ice block up, but pyro is pretty great. It's a lot of damage. This guy's playing some beast deck, so it's fine. I don't care. Again, I'm not dying, which is all that matters. Like that's free mana. Right? This first ring toss. Yes, yes, yes. I can actually kill my dude and just discount my hand by quite a lot. They'd never expect that. Ocean of Polymer, probably. If, man, if they have like secret tech though, it's gonna be very upsetting. They never have secret tech. Eight mana Pyroblast, look at this damn power creep. Wasn't Pyroblast like eight manas to begin with? Oh, you suck. Wait, the damage here is actually very relevant. Oh, it's juicy. Nice, they didn't pop block either. Oh, let's go. I have fireballs in this deck. It actually might be relevant at some point. Absolutely mental. And I believe I have another ice block just in case. Please. Do you, okay? Hit this thing up again. Actually, okay, that's actually not the worst thing in the world. They're popping the block. Sure. If this hits, okay, uh, unfortunate. It's fine. They're popping block. Uh, I don't really know what I'm gonna. Oh my god, I'm so upset actually. Maybe I got lucky enough. The one three lives here. I just need one. One of these skeletons go face. Okay, they're popping the block. That's fine. No, no. Okay, it's still okay. Is it lethal? Oh my god, no way. Hog champ. Go hot damn. After praying to Yog saron we move on to our next quest, which is the priest one, activate the obelisk. Now looking at this quest, you could probably tell it is not that interesting. It's rather boring. It's just basically an upgraded priest hero power, but it turns out an upgraded priest hero power is pretty good. And this one was pretty decent in standard. So I didn't think this one was gonna take me that long, but it's not that interesting. So I'm gonna cut a bunch out so you can basically just see how I won with it. You're welcome. I guess I'm psychic streaming this and they're crying. 
All right, the benefit is the quest is giving me three life a turn, which is actually pretty important. So at this point, it's probably game because I, I can just basically out damage everything that they do. Play internal server too, and the game's probably just over. A lot of secrets in this deck, man. What's going on? If they don't have an answer to this. It's just over, right? Ready? Let me just do this. Do this. Force them to answer this. It might be another sack, sure, but I don't care, right? Of all time. I sleep, dude. I sleep. Bro, he has sacks in his hand. So he needs to answer this anyway. So I'm just going to buff this again. Force him to have a response. Again, just same thing. He clearly didn't have an answer for this last time. So we just keep doing this. All right. That one sucked the life out of me, if I'm going to be honest. That was horrible to play. After taking a quick nap with the priest quest, we move on to the next one, which is unseal the vault. Now, this quest did take some time to actually see play really in weird, standard, weird. but it was not that bad. There's not a bad. really nice combo you can do with Leroy Jenkins in Unleash the Hounds. So I didn't expect uh, this one to be that bad. There's a lot of great one. ways for Hunter to actually generate tokens. And because Starving Buzzard was unnerved, this was probably going to be pretty easy. Uh, arguably the, bu the buzzard is better here. The more we go into the future of Hearthstone, it, theoretically, these challenges should get only get easier. Because the power level of cards are just better. Anyways, yeah, we're just going to keep clearing the board. We got nothing else to do. Like, and basically, with this one, is just we're going to clear our opponent's board until we actually can get lethal. Do I get a beast? Ooh, I like Shuma. We can actually hit this. We saw the alley cat. We also saw Leroy. We kind of need Leroy in our hand, to be honest, because it's a very important card. Again, I just want to empty my hand. Shuma it up. I could have a uh, Serpent Bloom there, actually. Maybe that was better, but I don't really care. Little iffy here, to be honest. Honest, I might just lose. Maybe they don't actually kill. Oh, oh whenever you play this, what the hell? I'm, what? That's a real card. Oh no, not explosive either. God, that was not good. I didn't think this guy was gonna be so aggressive, dude. I played this so simple. Yes, yes. Well, he actually it worked. Wait, is this lethal? No, it's not lethal yet. It's actually extremely close though. I guess I'll force him to answer this. Think about here part first, but it's actually just more damage like this, right? I could trade, but I actually think going face here is insane. Leroy plus Leroy on its own with Unleash the Hounds at 10 mana is quite a lot. It's 14, so this will be insane. If they don't have a board clear here, we're chilling. And they just used, uh, we just saw School of Spirits a couple seconds ago, or a couple turns ago, so we're fine. The life tap's ginormous. Wait, this quest actually just might have won me the game on its own. Because they can't put another uh, Abyssal Curse in my hand. I actually just, I just, I think I just won. Let's just touch right now. They're done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even need Leroy, dude. Let's go. That was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. The warrior one and the paladin one were super easy for some reason, and I have no idea why. I got lucky, I guess. I think it would have been really, really hard. Thank you so much for watching the Uldum quest challenge. If you ended up enjoying it, I would really appreciate a subscription. I'm so close to 100K. And if you want to check me live for the next challenge, the link is in the description. Have a great day.